chorus frog over here. Sounds like that clicking sound, like you're rubbing your fingernail over a fine tooth comb. Right there. <laughs> I'm Andrew, and this is my wife Marcy, and we're volunteering for the Wisconsin DNR as citizen scientists investigating uh, and listening to frogs all over the southern Wisconsin. We have 10 sites that we visit uh, three different times throughout the spring and we listen for different species of frogs and we record what we hear and then we'll give that data back to the DNR. We started, the DNR started the routes officially in 1984. We get eastern tree frogs, copses tree frogs, um, toads, American toads, we get some green frogs. And occasional green frog. We've mm -hmm. heard of already. Um, citizen science is something that anybody can get involved in. Um, any age, uh, pretty much any ability. So we've been involved in citizen science for um, probably a little over 15 years. But we lived in Michigan, New Hampshire, and we got involved with the DNR in those states as well. Uh, we did frog surveys in northern Michigan. And in New Hampshire, we were salamander crossing guards. Amphibians are um, an indicator species, so if there's um, issues with pollution or um, anything going on in the water, um, they're going to be one of the first species that are impacted the by The pond goes completely dry. They're gone. They either migrate to another place or they go into the mud and try and wait it out because they can. Then the next year when we get water again there, they're miraculously, they all return. And so it's one of the mysteries that makes you know, nature-based work so interesting. It's like a detective story. How do they survive? How do they come back? Why do they come back? And uh, it's just a mystery. So that part of the work we do is to try and understand what's going on. That high-pitched sleigh bell kind of sound, that's the spring people.